Hi, welcome to Street Priest Ministries. I'm your host, Brother Jay, as we're taking the Gospels back to the streets. Today's drive-through message is the Book of Philippians, Part Two, and we're going to start at Chapter Three. That's where we left off. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you, to be. To me, indeed, is not grievous, but for you is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of concision. For we are, for we are the circumcision, but wish of God in the spirit, and rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel. Now Paul boasts. Sometimes you gotta play the fool, the fool the fool, and think he's fooling you. This is what Paul does on numerous occasions. Time he bosses up as they say in the street. To show if I want to go in the natural, head up with you, you're going to lose. My credentials speak for themselves. See, ignoramuses always have a viewpoint that's tremendously magnified like the size of planet Jupiter of these cells. And sometimes you gotta play the fool, the fool the fool. They it's fooling you. It's showing you know what I know when I've studied my background. You're not in the same league path. This is what Paul's doing. You're not on my left. Because you always got a jackass that got a little education which is indoctrination, <laughs> especially in these colleges. <laughs> They're learning. I've said that a million times, Stalin, Lenin, Olenski will be proud of these uh, universities that all they're producing is garbage for the kids, they are indoctrination. Not real education. See, there's a list of books that in the 18th century, 17th century, people's way smarter than in this generation of they way smarter. The people with major degrees are would be dumb in compared to the dropouts of George Washington period people was well versed because the thing is reading is fundamental and reading is pretty then there's only less than three percent of the population to read books anymore so you got a dumbed down population that the evil dark forces that be is setting up so they can control as they try to usher in the beast and the antichrist system gotta have a dumb people to get the bark of the beast So that's what's happening. So Paul's playing the fool to beat down the egotistical maniacs of his day. And Brother Jay has to deal with them too. He wouldn't recognize their name in Greek or Hebrew. But boy, they rattle off scripture. Try to club you over the head with their pea brain view of what they think. <laughs> the Bible's the dust said the word of the Lord. It'd be free brain view of it. And God's made me a wrecking ball for those kind of people. They make board the word of God through their traditions of men. 
It's a natural wrecking ball. And here's Paul. He's a wrecking ball in, in the New Testament. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness, which is in the law, blasphemes. Paul was chasing hunting down Christians. What? Before God turned him around for blasphemy of the law. He was a zealot for the law. That's what he's trying to tell. Because he's dealing with legalists. He said, I was way more legalist than you guys and had more credentials to pack it up. But what things were the gain of me? Those I counted lost for Christ. Ye doubtless. And I count all things but loss for the excellence, excellency of the knowledge of Christ. Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them as dumb. I count, count them as crap. See, when you get deep into God and deep into God's word, material things don't matter. God has blessed me. I done pretty much for a natural had all the material things that I wanted. Short of maybe a, a few things I can name, but I've you know, pretty much been blessed. God has always taken care of me, looked out for me. But I put him first, his word first. I give the way I teach you to, to give. And God has blessed me accordingly. And Paul, renounced material things, because this is a material world we live in. That's what Satan, that's one of the things he uses as bait to lure people in, material possession. So if God, by Jesus said, lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor dust, neither moth nor dust corrupt. And thieves break through and steal. For where one's treasure is, there was heart be also. So as you get deeper into God, God's word, these things down here, you understand are fleeting. Paul said, while we look not on things which are seen, but the things which are unseen. The things which are seen are terrible, but the things which are unseen are eternal. You get more and closer to eternity. Understand we're heaven now. And the riches and the rewards in heaven. The crap down here pales in significance. It's fool's gold down here. Satan is counterfeit. He's bait people. The counterfeit riches down here. The Lord is souls in the hell. Mark 8, 36 says, What shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world, lose his own soul? And what shall a man give in exchange for himself? So the world is geared to sell out. Got a bunch of sell out Sam, Sally, especially around the poor man. Ellie Wood propagates for material things down there. Sell out for material things. And all your material things are going to ride and go to hell with you. Want to be wealthy in God. And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ Jesus, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Now faith is impossible to please God. And so many Christians, when calamity strikes, they fall apart. Show you how much faith they have. Now it's going to test our faith. It's going to see who do you love? 
You love things, you love people, whatever you think you can't live without, God's going to test you, hell, whatever. To trust his word. This is a process. God's the potter with the clay. Get my teaching on the, on the potter's house. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. See, most of us, <laughs> Jesus said, take up a cross. A cross only good to die on. When you come to Christ, all hell's coming after you. I don't teach the honey dripping Christian. It's not a reality. Satan is coming in this cohort to break your faith. His whole idea, or excuse me, his whole MO, modus operandi, is to get you in the hell with him. That's what he does. And we're to take up a cross. And the reason Jesus said, few that be there enter in the straight gateway. The broadest way and widest gate lead unto destruction in the hell. Because of the cross, most people don't want to die. The cross is only good for death. You die to yourself. I said it a million times, you to follow street priest ministry. And to come alive to what God wants you. The cross represents an altar. An altar, something dies. You die to your way. Come alive to what God wants you. What mission God has for you in life. As you work toward it. That I may know him. And the power of his resurrection. And the fellowship of his suffering. Being made conformable. Unto his death. If by any means. I might attain. Unto the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I had already attained. Either were already perfect, but I know after, if I may apprehend that for which I also am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark and we're to do the same thing. Don't let Satan steal your crown. Satan wants you in hell with him. We'll turn, Satan wants to turn you into a pile of crap to go to hell with him. God wants to turn us into sons of God and daughters of God to go to spend eternity in heaven with him. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. We're all called. You're called even if you're a janitor in the church. God called you to sweep and mop the floors of the church. You're called. Everybody wants the grandiose positions in the church. Everybody wants to be a pastor and minister. I mean, what God calls you for. Very few of those. Very few of those that are anointed and appointed by God. And you know that because when they teach God a word, a verse you might have read a thousand times, the man of God sheds light on and brings the light and understanding. That's how you know you've been taught by a real man of God or a woman of God and not a charlatan. Not like some of these plastic preachers out there. Rufus Glitter T. Smiley Songs, New Age Baby. It's busy writing their books and preaching from thus saith their books. Bishop so and so or whatever. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore as many be perfect. Be thus minded. And if anything otherwise be minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereunto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind 
the same thing. Brethren, let us all be focused on eternity. So, you know, you got so many worldly Christians, and I can tell right away their mindset. They're just doing the same thing the world is doing only on the other side of the street. Their mindset is an eternity. We're passing through Bible said we're pilgrims and strangers now on a journey. Heaven is our home. We're behind the enemy lines right now. And we're trying to rescue and deliver those that are behind the enemy lines right now through the power of God's word and the ministry. We're all called to that. We set captives free. Brother B follows together in me and Okay, let me go back up here. Verse 15. This is uh, Philippians 3.15. Let us therefore as many be perfect. The word perfect he's talking about is to, to come to maturity. To be mature. Completion. So many babetards in the church. Been in the church 40 years, still a babetard. Still looking for a, a breast to suck on. Still looking for a similar bottle similar. Let us therefore as many be perfect, be thus minded, and if in anything yet be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereunto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. Brother be ye follows together of me. Paul wrote two-thirds of the, of the New Testament. And you got a lot of jackasses. I just dealt with one. I gave one to boot on social media. Talk about Paul's a heretic. I'll kick you through the upright so fast you insult. Pastor Paul, you, your head is spinning. Paul was trained three and a half years in the desert by Christ Jesus himself. I wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. Give him a tape teaching James versus Paul. Church divided. Brethren, be ye followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as we have us. For an example, for many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. Not everybody's a friend who calls himself a Christian. I said it a million times because you can rattle off scripture means nothing to me. The devil did that with Christ. The word himself, he rattled off scripture means nothing. The Bible says you know about their fruits. For many walk, as I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction. And whose God is their belt. That's all you see. In the Tower of Babel. Uh, television. And social media. Rufus Glittertees. New Age. Balaam. Smiley Saul. This is what he's talking about. Whose God is their belt. Not of a fat anyway. And whose glory is in their shame. Also mine earthly things. Come to God to get a Cadillac. Come to God to get a mansion. Or give to God to get a mansion. A corrupted giver. For our conversation as is in heaven. From thence also we look for the Savior. The Lord Jesus Christ, who shall challenge our vile body, and it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able, even to subdue all things unto himself. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, and long for my joy and my crown, 
So stand fast in the Lord, my dear beloved. I beseech you, Dias, and beseech Syntyche, plus Syntyche, yeah, that they be of the same mind in the Lord. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel, with Clement, and also with other fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. God's going to reward all those that participated in street priest ministry, as well as Brother Jack, and help hold arms of this ministry. You will be rewarded. Your name will be written in the book of life. This ministry is ordained of God. That's why I really don't worry about the naysayers. God will deal with them. He has many over the years. He's come up against Brother Jack. Touch down my anointing here by teaching them. And so was Paul, Brother Paul. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. How much more now? It's written over 2,000 years. The Lord really is at hand now. <laughs> you know, the court come any day. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer, and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Peace of God. Cessation of against us. God is no longer our enemy. He's our friend. We can go boldly before the throne of grace. Talk to God like you would talk to me. You ain't got to use no stained glass tone God. Magnificent one, omniscient, I'm not present, I'm not so. You ain't got to do that. It's healing. God, it's my big toe that's injured. Healing, please, in Jesus' name. Talk to him like you talk to a normal person. So you people get these prayers and oh, I used to, I used to couldn't stand with the religious crowd. I ain't religious, neither was Christ or God in the Bible. But man, they make these long-winded, stained glass prayers. It just, I'll be halfway asleep by the time they're done. Couldn't stand. The Bible talks about wishing to God in spirit and truth. And seeking such. You want to, in other words, keep it real with God. Put it in street language. Right? When you talk to him, keep it real. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, Whatsoever things are good, report, if there be any virtue, and if any there be any praise, think on these things. Focus on, keep, brainwash your mind with positive things, what Paul said. Hollywood, this whole world is designed for negativity, to keep crap on your brain. We want virtuosity. We want to be virtuous as Christians in God. And it also affects your health. A lot of negative stuff. I mean, you listen to the fake news. Negative. Everything's negative. The whole world is set up. Say he's the God of this world. Negative. 
Lord just told you what to think. And it's hard to think on those things if you're being programmed. By watching the crap that's coming out of him. You better go back to reading books. Anything my crusades get people to start reading. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. The God of peace shall be with you. But I have rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me have flourished again when wherein we were also careful but ye lacked opportunity not that I speak in respect of one for I have learned in whatsoever state I am there will be content now what Paul is saying has been kind of twisted Paul ain't content or happy for being in prison in the underground cistern chain, 19 feet underground. He ain't happy about that. But he knows that God is with him in whatever circumstance he's in. He sees God, not the circumstance. That's the content. Not for the circumstance he's going to take, but knowing God is with him and with us through our circumstances. That's where the contentment comes in for the mature Christians. I'm talking about the babe charge with the mature Christians. Now that I speak in respect of one, for I have learned in that whatsoever state I am to be there with, with content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to be to, to abound. A lot of people don't. Brother Paul did, but most people don't. And that's why God keeps them abased, because they don't know how to abound. They show offs egotistically. Pride. Some people God just gotta keep his thumb on and keep them down. They don't know how to a bound. I know both how to be a base and I know how to abound. Everywhere and do all things. I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Very famous verse there. It's Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. All things. Holy Spirit in us gives us the ability to do all things. Notwithstanding, ye have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction. You gave when I was afflicted. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, and no church communicated with me, gave. It's all got to do with giving. With me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye own. This is, that's why this is the joy left. It's the only church. It gave God's way to Philippians. And this was Paul's joy lamp to Philippians. And Paul said, you prove the genuineness of God's spirit in the bad way you give. Not tongue talking, flapping around, or flopping around like a fish out of water. Babbling. Not rattling off scripture to show how knowledgeable you are and well versed. Not hallelujahs and praising, not praying mass. Give. Yeah. 
For even in Thessalonica, even in Thessalonica, you sit once and again the mind is necessity. Paul said, I'm in prison. I I don't need anything, but you're sitting. Because you've been taught so well. And if you've been taught immaterial things give or taught spiritual things, give material things for the one to touch. So even though I don't need this, but this is accruing to your reward yet. Because that's what Jesus said, laying up treasures, that's how you lay it up. And give the material things to the one who taught you down there is God's plan. And over there you'll be rewarded. God can reward you here too. Is that not, that's not guaranteed. But you are guaranteed to be rewarded now for what you do here through God's work. Or it's material giving, giving money, material things. Not because I desire a gift but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. In other words, you're going to be rewarded in heaven for this gift. I don't need it. I can't do nothing with it. But I'll keep it so that you may be blessed in return. Those that do get into heaven and didn't give God's way, if they're that fortunate, they're going to be spiritual paupers in heaven. You be spiritual bums in heaven. But I have all in a bath. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of sweet smell and sacrifice acceptable, well pleasing to God. Now, the words he's using right here is, is the one offering. That made God more happy than anything that you can do in the Bible. You had different type, types of offerings. You had the trespass offerings. You had the sins offerings. You had other offerings there. But the burnt offering is the one that moved.